Good morning, YouTube. It's Sharice here. It is 4.45 a.m. on Tuesday, the 21st. Yes, it's the 21st of February, and I'm doing my get ready with me routine for um, getting ready to teach school. I'm going to show you guys my go-to look that I've been rocking since day one of teaching. So I'm going to show you guys my skin. I just cleansed my face. I haven't toned it yet. But I just want to show you how much better my skin is doing. Can you see the improvement, how my dark spots have started to fade? And just how my skin has improved. We just see that I have this one major dark spot right here and a couple on my chin. Still a few on the cheek area. And just a few on this side. So my skin has been doing so much better, guys. And I'm so pleased with my results. And let's just jump into what I do next. So I've already cleansed my face. The cleanser I used this morning, which I just did a video about my February favorites and update haul, life update, all that stuff. I use the Glam Glow, the white one. This is the one I typically like to use in the morning. And if I feel like I still have leftover makeup on, I'll use black soap before I use that. But I didn't feel like I had any because I cleansed my face really well last night. So I like to take an exfoliating cotton round. I got these at Target. Take one of these and I go in with this toner this has been a favorite of mine this is a witch hazel aloe vera toner with rose petals it's alcohol free it's by the brand Thayer's looks like this squeeze it on here saturate it and I go in and I rub the exfoliating side all over my face and I'm really focusing on anywhere I have any acne and where I have dark marks first I also like to focus around my hairline because there's always just a little bit of makeup left in that area and then I flip it to the smooth side and I like to pat under my eye. Try not to get it in your eye. But this has moisturizing properties to it so I really like um, using it under my eye. And you can see my face is going to look wet and shiny and that's what I like to do. I like to apply it very liberally. And then with whatever is left over I go behind my ears and I take it down onto my neck, deglige, chest area. I just take it all the way down y'all. Because we ain't about wasted product in here. Sometimes I go on the back of my neck, you know. You know, can never do too much uh, toning. So, that's that. Now I look kind of sweaty-ish, and that's okay. And that just removes any extra dirt, and it just helps your pores and all that stuff toned if you're oily. This helps to control my oil, too. And then I have to let my face dry. So I usually just fan it like this, as y'all can see. I talked about all my favorite foundations for work, but right now I've been really stuck on the Wet n Wild Photo Focus foundation, and that's the one I'm going to wear today. I wore it yesterday, and it lasted. It held up so great without a primer. So I'm going to do the same thing today, and I'm going to use another powder that I've been loving. I forgot to talk about it in the video, but in my video that I did yesterday, but we're going to talk about it today. So I'm just making sure that my hairline, that I have it covered um, to the very edge so I won't have the distinct line of makeup but I'll show you how I fix that so this is my face after being toned sometimes I go in with a moisturizer but as of late um, I've noticed that with this foundation going without a moisturizer or a primer works best and gives me the best results also like I said this toner has moisturizing properties in it so I'm stopping here with the skincare and going straight into makeup all right, so this is the foundation. Like I said, the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. This is the shade 378 Espresso. This is what it looks like. Again, this foundation is supposed to be, you know, no flashback. Um, basically, no flashback. I, all the things on here that it's supposed to do are not written, but this foundation is amazing. It's becoming a staple of mine. And it's only $5.99. So one of the cheapest but most quality foundations that you can get at your local drugstore. 
So let's jump in. It has a spatula, you can see. I just like to spread it onto my face like so. It is kind of messy, it is very liquidy. And then I like to wipe off whatever's on the bottle onto my chin area. So what I have on my face should be enough. A little bit of this really goes a long way. It has excellent coverage. Again, this shade is looking ultra yellowy green on camera, but we're about to get it right. And I'm gonna apply it with the Beauty Blender. This works great with a brush or a Beauty Blender. And I'm gonna grab my mirror so I don't have to look so far away. My Beauty Blender is damp and freshly washed. I wash it before I use it every time. I wash it before I wash it before each use. There we go. So yeah, on camera this is pulling really greenish. I don't know what color it looks on camera, but in person it matches my skin almost perfectly. It's really strange that looks so weird on camera. That happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it looks like I'm applying like a greenish yellow mask to my face. I think it's just my lights because I'm in the bathroom and then I have another artificial light just to make it a little bit brighter. But you see how quickly and easily this applies and I'm just going to do I think this one layer. I might have to go in and add a little bit extra. For school I like to do medium to fullish coverage. I like to be pretty flawless looking for school. That's just my style of makeup in general. Oops. I'm not really into light coverage products. I like at least a medium coverage. All right, and you just wanna make sure that you blend over your ears a little bit. Go as close as you can to your hairline. I don't care if I get a little bit of makeup on my scarf. Make sure you go under your chin. You ain't trying to be having a mask out here. I like to go over my eyelids. I go under my eyes as well. You guys know I don't really wear concealer like that. I'm not a concealer girl. I don't really need it. And you see now my skin tone is nice and evened out with one layer, one quick application. And I'm just making sure that it's really blended. You can see I didn't apply super duper a lot, so you can still see some of my imperfections showing through. But with some of the other products we're going to use, I'm not too worried about them. You can still kind of see the one in the middle of my forehead. This foundation is a medium to full coverage. If you apply more, you get full coverage. Like yesterday, I applied more after I did this one initial layer and got super duper full coverage, but I don't really feel like applying any more foundation today. So I'm just putting my Beauty Blender down. As you can see, the color is looking a little bit better with this lighting. I don't know why it's looking so yellow green, but um, I feel like it matches my skin tone very well because it's not overly red. So what I do after this is I set my face. Sometimes I do it in different ways depending on the foundation and how well it lasts. But yesterday using a couple different all over face powders made this last wonderfully. <clears throat> and the powder I'm going to try it out with today is the one I forgot to mention. This is the Early Girl Face Pro HD powder. This is the shade Chestnut, which I believe is the second to darkest shade. I also have the darkest shade. It looks like this. I'm going to use this to set all over my face and I like to apply my powders with a flat top brush. And I literally just go in, I really pack it on and I just press it directly over the foundation. I don't sweep or swirl, not yet. You just press it in over the foundation. I go over my entire face. And this is going to add a little bit more coverage and it helps to control oil when you just press it and pack it onto your skin. As you can see. So you can see the difference between one half. So this is the half with powder, how it just looks more blurred and perfected. And this is the half without powder. It has a little bit more glow to it. But this foundation is pretty much a satin matte finish. It's really beautiful finish. It dries nicely. It dries down nicely. It's not overly sticky or anything like that. It's just a really good foundation. Like I'm really enjoying it, really loving it. And I paid for it myself. Of course, y'all know I ain't that big to be getting sponsored and all that stuff. 
I just do this because I love it and I like helping people be self-sufficient with your makeup. Like you can be your own face. You can become your own makeup artist. You don't need to pay people for these things. All right, so I just continue packing the powder on, making sure to cover my entire face. Making sure that nowhere is left unpowdered because I am an oily girl. As you can see, I'm pressing it into my skin. That's a major key. If you have oily skin or if you're trying to add additional coverage, it's pressing it into your skin. And then with whatever's left over, of course, make sure you get under your chin, go over your ears, bring it down your neck a little bit. And as you can see, now the color is looking quite nice. Still has a little bit of weird color because of my lights, but in person, me looking in my bathroom mirror, it looks like a perfect flawless match. And you can just see how that just gives a more flawless finish and effect to the skin. This powder is amazing. This powder, I believe, is $6.99 or $5.99. So very inexpensive and it does keep you matte for a long time. It's really good at oil control. Look at the coverage. Look at the finish. It's beautiful. Run and go get you this um, this foundation from Went Well and this powder from LA Girl. I had to order my eyeline because of course, you know, it ain't ever in the stores, but yeah. Okay, so. When I feel like my whole face is powdered and if I feel like the color looks good, then I don't add any other powders. Most of the time I use multiple powders to get a good shade match, like a good color match with my complexion. But this powder is very close to my true skin tone and it really helps any foundation that I have on if it's a little bit off to really match me well, match me better. So. I'm just taking stuff out of my makeup bag. I like to have my makeup bag with me when I'm getting ready in the morning. So if there's anything I want to take with me throughout the day, I can just go ahead and put it in and not forget. So now I'm just going to look in this mirror and make sure that I approve. Yeah, I don't think I need to add any other powders to help bring the color, to help correct the color. I think it looks really good and it looks really smooth and really flawless. And now you can see that my imperfections are barely showing through like on the sides of my face I feel like they're all covered this one is still slightly showing through just like the tiniest bit I can see it. it's like a little bit of a shadow all right so after I set my whole face with powder and now it's like transfer resistant like nothing is coming off of my hands when you set your face with that much powder and you really press it into your skin nothing comes off what I like to do after that is I'll go in with the damp beauty blender that still has some of the foundation on it and I'm going to press the powder into the skin and melt it in with this dampened sponge and this just helps to lock in that powder and take away any powdery effect but honestly with that powder I don't have a powdery effect at all my face just looks really matte but this is something I like to do just press that powder in with your damp and beauty blender just to make sure that you don't look powdery or ashy or cakey And it just helps everything mesh into the skin. And honestly, I still have a very natural, flawless finish to my skin. All right, so after I powder my whole face and I feel like my foundation is good to go, the next thing I like to do is highlight. And I'm gonna highlight with my favorite highlighter that I mentioned in my video yesterday. <laughs> Excuse me. And this is from Black Radiance. It is one of their Artisan Color Baked Bronzers in the shade Ginger Snap. Can we just talk about how beautiful it is? You see that? You see that? Ha! Your glow is gonna be popping. My other favorite is from the Carly Bible palette, uh, one of her highlighters in her palette she made with BH, but I'm gonna use this one today. And I've been using all sorts of different brushes to apply my highlighter, but the one I've been loving is this e.l.f. blush brush. I feel like it works really well. And I literally just pack it onto one side of the brush and go right onto my cheekbones. That's one place I normally always highlight. I just feel like this applies it right where I want it and you're able to blend it out. So you see that glow that we're having? This is a beautiful highlight and it's only $4.99, so you see that? 
basically for every day I do mostly drugstore unless I just feel like being extra then I'll use my Clinique foundation or the Kat Von D foundation which I talked about in that video I made yesterday normally I'm eating my breakfast right now and drinking my tea but I don't want to walk away from you guys and go start the hot water and then go back and remember that I have boiling water on the stove and make my tea and all that so I'm just gonna stay right here and do it after you can tell that I'm a morning person I'm very awake aware you know I'm definitely a morning person thank you Lord for that being an elementary school teacher and so <laughs> that glow <laughs> okay yeah I really do love this highlighter I don't really contour anything like that you'll see this is like for complexion we're almost done all right and then I also love to do the bridge of my nose that's actually my favorite place to highlight and I love this brush blush because it's kind of tapered you see it comes to kind of like a point so it works really well to highlight the bridge of my nose and the lighting is kind of going in and out because I have a white background behind me I'm in my bathroom of course this setup is actually working quite well I don't feel too uncomfortable bending and making this video and the mirrors right here and I have a hand mirror right here how do I bring it a little bit brighter it was like balancing to something else Okay, I also like to highlight my cupid's bow. Sometimes I'll use a smaller brush to highlight my nose, but today I just feel like using this brush. And I just feel like it gives a little bit more of a natural look and it kind of blends itself when you use a bigger fluffier brush like this. But you can see I'm also doing the cupid's bow. And I also like to highlight my brow bone with my highlighter that I use on my face and I literally just kind of brush it around and through my brow and I kind of sweep it up above as well just a little bit just to get that glow right there you see that how that's happening yeah I like that that's just my preference remember do you I'm just showing you my technique for my everyday routine to get ready for work so once I'm done Highlighting that I'm done with complexion and I move on to brows, eyes, and lips. And this is basically my go-to look, like I said. You see just how that gives a nice little glow. I don't know why I keep doing that. Probably because I'm in a really good mood. Life is just going really great right now. My finances are a little, but you know, I know the Lord will come through, especially since I'm going to have to start paying back these loans, these loans, but you know, I'm probably going to have to get a second job, which is pretty sad considering that I'm in the profession that makes all other professions possible. Why should I have to work a second job just to be able to pay all of my bills? But you know, we're not going to, we're not going to get into that discussion right now. We are talking about my work makeup routine. All right, so complexion is done. My skin is evened out um, with, well, first of all, it's taken care of with my skin care that I do. And then it's evened out with the Wet n Wild Foundation. Then it is mattified and, and made to last all day and controlled by that LA Girl Pro powder. And it is highlighted and illuminated so that it's not as flat and dull with the Black Radiance baked bronzer that I use as a highlighter. So the next thing I do is I go in and do my brows. And I normally use only one product for my brows and it is from Wet n Wild. And it is this Wet n Wild Mega Last Eyeliner Crown Pencil in the shade Black. It just says black on there. I don't know if y'all can see that. Black, like me. So it's a twist up. It's supposed to be for eyeliner, but I use it for my brows. It works really great for my brows. These are my brows, so you guys can kind of see what I'm working with. Um, they have actually grown in a little bit more, but you see they're very thin. They're very sparse. You can kind of not see them against my deep, dark, chocolatey complexion. So I just go in and 
enhance them with this one pencil, this one product. Because it's super quick, it's super fast. And I'm basically just working with what I got. I don't really create a whole new brow. I'm just working with what I got. I'm just filling it in and just making it more defined. Invisible. This is how I do my brows every day. You see that? The difference that just made? So just a few swipes of this Wet n Wild Mega Last Pencil. I now have a brow that looks really nice. I feel like people kind of overcomplicate makeup and just do all these unnecessary steps, but do what makes you happy. But I'm all about what's most efficient and what's, you know, quick and easy and practical for everyday life. And if I don't need something, then I don't put it on like concealer, don't need it. Primer, I don't always need it. Does it make a difference? Yes, but I don't always feel like I need it depending on what other product I'm using. Concealing my brows and cleaning them up, I don't need it. So I don't do that stuff. But if you need it, you do it, you know? Do what works for you. That's what makeup's all about. Finding what works best for you and complements your features. All right, so you see brows are like almost all the way snatched in what, two minutes? I don't know if y'all are timing that. Boom, brows. And they're already highlighted and all that good stuff, so. I'm just working on the front section of the brow. Making sure that my two brows are symmetrical and even. One usually comes out a little bit thicker than the other one. That's okay. It's not too bad. But see, those are my brows. And I feel like these look pretty darn good considering that they only took like a couple minutes. So I'm done with my brows. Now we're moving on to the eyes. And I normally do one to two eyeshadows, no more than that. And I'm gonna show you guys my go-to eyeshadow for school. This is my one of my favorite ones. And I feel like looking extra fancy, this is the eyeshadow I go for. And let's be fancy today. This is the Sephora eyeshadow, it's just a single eyeshadow in the shade Hollywood's Calling. This is a beautiful glittery bronzy brown, you see that? And I just put this all over my lid using a brush from Coastal Scents. This nice big brush. It can cover like my whole eye, so it makes the process of applying it even quicker. And I just rub it all on the brush. And I'm gonna pack up both sides so I can do both eyes. I literally just sweep it onto my eyelid. And I put it all on the lid and into my crease. Sometimes you have to grab a little bit more. It does have a lot of glitter in it, so it does have fallout, but. As you can see, it is so beautiful. You can really build it up and intensify it. And that's what I do on my lid area is I keep layering it up so I can really intensify it on my lid and then it kind of is less intense in my crease than other places. But I just put this all over my lid. Like I said, I'm working it into the crease. We're blending with this brush, one brush to do this whole shadow look. If you want to add another shadow to define your outer V more or to Add into the crease if you don't want to put this all in the crease like I am because it is very shimmery and glittery. 
you do you but this is literally my go-to shadow for school and I use the same brush and I apply it to my lower lash line as well. Can y'all see that? Hold on. Yeah, you can. And sometimes I do get glitter in my eye, but I'm kind of used to it. Some days I do tear up. I'm kind of doing that a little bit today. But literally I'm just taking it all over. I don't know if y'all can really see what it's doing for my eyes. But yeah. That's the one eyeshadow I really like to use. That it's my go-to. And just adds a little bit of, you know, sparkle and shine and shimmer to my eyes. It does a little something. Some days I don't even wear eyeshadow at all, like honestly, but this is my go-to one. So I'm showing y'all like my kind of glamified work. Makeup, a lot of times I don't even wear eyeshadow. I don't even put foundation over my eyes. I just wear my natural eyelid skin color a lot of the times if I'm feeling extra lazy. All right. So that was pretty simple and easy. So after I do that, I like to highlight my inner corners sometimes. And I just use the same highlighter that I use on my face and a small little tiny brush like this. And this one is also from coastal sense I believe and you can see how the foundation now is matching me a lot better and not looking as weird in color with the lights so I just rub this little brush into that same highlighter we use in my face and I'll go in and highlight my inner corners sometimes it shows up sometimes it doesn't I don't really you know spend too much time on this sometimes you have to kind of build it up a little bit so you get a little bit of something, something in there. Also, if it's a little bit moistened, that helps it pop. See, we're getting somewhere now. This is kind of like my go-to everyday look. Let's see, I've got the inner corners popping now with the same highlighter that I used on my face. So it's all like in the same neutral golden color family. So that's it for eyeshadows that I do. And then if I want to wear a winged liner, I'll do a, a winged liner. But most days I don't even wear winged liner. But I've been kind of experimenting with it. And I've been experimenting with putting black on the, what is it called, on my lower waterline. But I don't normally do that. Normally I just go in with mascara after I do this simple eyeshadow, but you can't do a wing. Let's be a little fancy. We're going to do a little bit of a wing, but I'm not going to put black on the lower waterline. I did yesterday. I kind of like it. I don't know how I feel about it yet. 100%. All right, so... Oh, the, the liner I'm using is the NYX Matte Liquid Liner. This is one of my favorites. It lasts a really long time. I feel like you get a really good amount of product for the price. I think this was like $7.99. And I just do a really thin liner and a really small wing for school. I don't go too dramatic. Y'all see that? It just really enhances my eye shape and just helps to bring out my eyes a little bit more. And I don't even connect it all the way in. Hopefully y'all saw me do that, but this is the kind of liner I normally wear to school if I do choose to wear a liner. It's really quick. And you just see how that just brings out my eyes a little bit more. It does make a difference. But to me, it's not even that serious to do this every day. But yeah, I just do a really small wing. I'm trying to stay as close to my eye as possible. Sometimes they come out perfectly the same and sometimes one comes out a little bit more round. 
That's okay though. Sometimes one comes out a little bit longer than the other, you know. These are just things you have to deal with when it comes to makeup. It's not always going to be perfectly symmetrical, but that bothers me. Because I'm pretty sure I have a, a tiny bit of OCD, if that's a thing. A very mild form. Especially when it comes to my makeup. All right, so that's it for eyeliner. Oh, I didn't mean to move the computer. Let me just see how that just brightened my eyes a little bit more. Like I said, I do tiny baby wings, as you can see. And you see how good this foundation is looking with this powder? Girl, go get it. Girl or boy, whoever you are watching this video. If you wanna slay on a budget. So after I do that, I go in with mascara and one of my favorites is the CoverGirl The Super Sizer or I'll use the Maybelline The Falsies Push Up Drama but this is the waterproof one so only if I feel like um, my eyes are extra watery or my kids are going to be doing something that's going to make me super proud and like make me emotional and like cry do I wear that one because it is waterproof so it's kind of difficult to get off. I just use some olive oil. So I'm just going to go in with the CoverGirl The Super Sizer one. And I just really go in and build up my lashes. I don't wear falsies hardly ever. Not even for special occasions, really. I'm just not a false lash kind of girl. They do make a difference, though. But you see how my eyelashes are starting to pop just with mascara. So if you really are patient and you build it up, you can get some really nice lashes with just mascara. And usually I'll do one coat and then I'll take off my head scarf and see what's happening around the perimeter of my hairline if I need to blend that out a little bit, which normally I do. So I'm going to do one coat of mascara right now, being very careful not to do it on my eyelid. I'm really focusing on the outer lashes closest to the corner of my eye. So now I'm going to take my scarf off that's securing my edges. See edges late. And you see how that color difference around my edges isn't too bad? That's one other way to tell if your foundation really matches you if you have natural hair. You see how my face is a little bit more not as red toned as my scalp on the edges. So I just take my beauty blender that I used to do my foundation and I literally just pat right over my edges. I'm not moving the hair around. I'm just pressing around the edges of my hair just to blend that out and to blend the foundation, the edge of the foundation more seamlessly with the natural color of my edges and my scalp, where my scalp begins, especially right here in the middle. That seems to always be the place where it looks the most rache. So this is the first step <clears throat> to kind of getting that to look a little more seamless. The next step is I go in with a little bit of the powder that I use on my face. So again, the LA Girl Pro Face Powder. This is High Definition Matte Press Powder in the shade Chestnut. I'll take a little bit of that onto my flat top brush that I use to apply powder to the face. And I literally just press right over my hairline. Just to make sure that there's no funny business going on. And that's why I tone my hairline too to make sure I get all the makeup out of my edges. But this is just to make sure that it's seamless. Y'all don't want no lines, you know what I'm saying? And then I'll just go ahead and touch up if I feel like I need to. If there's any oil that has broken through, which now nah, bro. My face is signed, sealed, and delivered. And that's that. So by the time I've done all that, you can see how that looks seamless now. How you can't tell that there's a difference between the edges, my scalp, and my, my face as bad now. You just want to make sure that you know you're looking right. You know what I'm saying. Then I go back in with more mascara after I do that. 
And normally I can do this whole process in 30 minutes, especially if I'm not talking or trying to get the angles right or just try to be extra careful so I don't make any mistakes. So this is raw, real, live, unedited. Y'all already know, so you're seeing this in real time. I normally try to leave my house on the best days. I'll leave my house at 6 and I'll be at school at 6.30 a.m. Even though I don't have to be there until 7.05. Um, but I try to leave no later than 6.20. So really I have a whole nother hour if I need to to get whatever I need to get done. But I just need to pack my lunch. Everything else is done. Pack my lunch. I've ironed my clothes for the week. Something That's the first time I'm doing that actually. And it makes such a difference when it comes to choosing what I'm going to wear because I already have some pre-selected, pre-prepared outfits. It just saves you so much time. And you see how I'm building up my lashes? Like, look at that. A tip is let your first layer of mascara dry basically all the way and then go in and add more. It just really helps to add some volume and thickness to your lashes, to your natural lashes. Hopefully y'all can see the difference this mascara is making. It looks bomb. And sorry, I'm out of the frame a little bit. I just gotta stand up and look at this eye. I cut the lashes off of this eye a while ago, so they're not quite the same as my other eye. They're a little bit shorter and just a little weird all right so i'm done with upper lash mascara y'all can see how that really like makes a difference and then i like to do my lower lashes as well I feel like it just helps to open the eyes up even more And I try to be very careful because you can cause some disasters if you get this on the skin down there. And I think that this like glittery bronzy gold eyeshadow looks really good with my skin tone because I have warm golden undertones. So it like just brings out, it brings out and enhances my natural beauty without being overly done and too much for school. It's like a very soft glam kind of look. And I love the contrast with the dark lashes and the little bit of dark, dark, dark liquid liner. I just think it looks really pretty. And this is my signature go-to look when I don't know what I want to do and just what I go to and gravitate towards for school. And just really every day nowadays, I've gotten kind of plain with my makeup. I don't experiment with color as much. And you see how the bottom lashes, how they're popping with this mascara? Please give this mascara a try. It is from a drugstore. I believe it's $7.99 or $8.99. Covergirl, the Super Sizer. As you can tell, I've used mostly drugstore products except the one eyeshadow that's all over the lid and on my bottom lash line. The Hollywood's Calling from Sephora. But that's still even affordable because it's a single eyeshadow. <laughs> you see how my lashes are popping tin? What is this mascara? Popping tin. This is probably what takes the longest other than my, my skin is me layering up mascara, trying to be fluky. But yeah. All right, so that is my eyes done, my face is done, my brows are done, my eyes are done. And lastly is lips. And I already know the lip color I wanna wear today. And most of the time I do my lipstick before I brush my teeth. That's just a bad habit that I have. But I'm going to try out a new product that I recently purchased on this past Saturday. And it is the Milani Amour Matte Metallic Lip Cream in my Soulmate. And it's a beautiful metallic red. Are we seeing this? So I'm just going to make sure that it's all mixed up by doing some prayer hands and rolling it through. While I do this, I'm just going to give you guys some angles so you can see this natural glam beat that I do for school. And you can do any lip color with this look because it's so neutral. See what I'm saying? Do any lips. 
All right, nude, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. So let's try this. Ooh, my lips are a little dry. Oh gosh, a lot of dry. You might have to take this off and uh, reconsider or scrub off this dead skin. So far, it's super pigmented. Smells really good. Uh, yeah, it's really pigmented. I haven't had to dip in again. Oh, wow. It smells like vanilla cupcakes. It smells like cake batter. It smells really good. Super easy to apply. Love the doe foot applicator. I just love Milani lip products. They're just bomb. Milani is just bomb. Bruh, beautiful. Y'all see that color? Ignore the dryness in the center of our lips, like, mm. Yeah, I need to get that dead skin off. Beautiful. So that's the lip color of the day. And my little makeup bag that I take to school with me is right here. So that completes my get ready with me, my work makeup routine. Um, like I said, I do use other powders, but I talked about the powders that I use basically every day in the video I just made, my February favorites and life update, all that good stuff. Um, this is, I love the way this look came out. This is exactly what I wanted for today. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what other looks you want to see. Let me know what you think about this foundation match, this color match. Let me know what you think about this makeup look. Do you think this is appropriate for an elementary school music teacher? Remember, music teachers were a little eccentric, you know, we like to be expressive. We are in the arts. And y'all know that I just love makeup. But yeah, definitely try out all these products. Let me know what other looks you guys want to see. Again, um, I hope you guys enjoy this video and you have a terrific Tuesday. <coughs> I have been a little bit sick. I should probably go to the doctor. But um, yeah, that is it for this video. Like I said, let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you have tried any of these products or if you like any of these products, if you love them. Um, yeah, just let me know what you think down below what else you want to see. So yes, again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. God bless you all. Love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Bye-bye.